All right, everybody. Praise God. Jesus bless the people. I plead the blood of Jesus on this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. What happens when you pray? What happens? And we're getting ready for Google Meet, y'all. It'll start in about 20, 25 minutes at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sunday night. We have movie night tonight. Uh, Divine Revelation of Heaven. All right, so be there. It's on every video. How to get you can go to JesusDoers.com. It'll give you the Google Meet information. Okay, so we've been going over God's uh, relationship, God speaking, God inviting. We're still in God speaking. What happens when you pray? All right, if I start asking God for one thing and, and something different happens, I always respond to what begins happening. Right, I found God always has far more to give me than I can even ask or think, okay? So Paul wrote, he said, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power, that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. That's Ephesians 3, 20-21. Ephesians 3, 20 through 21. <laughs> Excuse me. So you can't imagine a prayer that comes close to, to what God wants to give you, y'all. Only the Spirit of God knows what God is doing or purposing in your life. So let God give you all that he wants to bestow upon you. I want you to take a look at 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12. Let's see over here. 1 Corinthians 10, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12. Okay, read that. And I want you to ask yourself, are you experiencing what God intends for you? Or are you experiencing only what you have asked for? You can answer that question for yourself. Pause the video. Are you personally experiencing what God intends for you? Or are you experiencing only what you have asked for? Okay, and now write down what is the evidence. Write the evidence down. You can pause the video. All right, here's your second question. Who alone can guide you into the center of God's will? Who alone can guide you into the center of God's will? All right, pause the video. All right, suppose you want to start a mission church in a particular area of town or something, and you've taken a survey to identify different needs of the people in that town. You made a long-range plan, so you've asked God to bless and guide your work. Then God begins to bring to your church a group of ethnic people to whom you did not intend to minister. What do you do? What do you do? Would you, uh, would you say I would not be delivered from the starting the mission church that we had planned? I mean, delivered, diverted. Would you not, would you be diverted from the original plan? Or I would add the ethnic group to our future plans? Or I would start asking God questions to learn whether we should start an ethnic mission church instead of or in addition to the other one? What would you do? And that's happened to me. Okay, God gave me a ministry to run right here to teach all of you his word, and I do. I pound the concrete with it, and y'all know I do. And then God added Africa into this ministry. Okay, so do I just only focus on what God has me doing here when God added Africa to it? So I'm teaching you, you, you. I'm teaching every day in many different directions. Okay, and then God said, now bring Africa into it. Okay, and then I get all of you to help the ministry. And then together we go and make a difference in Africa. So you can still, you can do both and it still be God's total will. Okay, you got to do it according to God's plan, not our own plan. I <laughs> know that's artwork right there, y'all. 
So in this situation, I would immediately go before God to clarify what he's saying. If I've been working and praying in one direction, I see God working in another way, then what do we do? We adjust, I adjust my life to what God is doing. God is teaching us here, helping a lot of you actually grow. And at the same time, he's added Africa into it to help the homeless people and the poor people that, they, that have no help. Okay, and we are also sending the word of God out to those people to help bring some salvation. So we're doing it God's way, not just our way. I'm not just sitting here teaching just you guys and just trying to help you guys just grow. I am helping you guys. The Holy Spirit's helping through, he helping me through me to help you. That's how he works. But he also said, now you and the group help Africa. So we are to help this ministry. Help it to grow and Africa, all of it together. So you got to decide whether you will do what you want and ask God to bless it or, or go to work where he's working. One of the two. Okay, so let's talk about the silences of God. Sometimes you'll go through lengthy time when God's going to be silent, y'all. I hear you all the time. I don't hear God. Where's God? I don't feel God. Don't hear him. You know, and... I'll, I'll go through it sometimes. You probably had had uh, that experience. I know you have. Well, I've been praying for many days, but God seemed to be totally silent. Right? And I sensed heaven was like, shut up. It feels like they're God, where are you? And I didn't understand what was happening. Some people had told me that if God doesn't hear my prayer, that I have sin in my life. Right? But I had repented and confessed of those sins. All known sin that I could think of. I couldn't understand why God was silent. And I talked to many of you out there who contact me all the time. Saying I used to feel God. I don't feel him anymore. I don't hear him. Why don't I hear him? I feel like God hates me. God's nowhere around me. When the truth of the matter is God is always around you. Always. The word of God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Do you remember a biblical person who had a problem like this, y'all? His name was Job. His counselors told him all his problems were caused by sin. While Job claimed he and God were on good terms. Job did not know all God was doing at the time. But his counselors were wrong, okay? God had another reason for his silence. So I want you to pause the video and think about a time that you have experienced this silence, you particularly. You can start it back up. All I knew to do was go back to God, believing that God was, was in a love relationship with me. That that love relationship would let me know what's happening in my life when and if I needed to know. So I prayed, Heavenly Father, I don't understand the silence. You are going to have to tell me what you are doing in my life. There's times I had to do this, y'all. So do you. And you know what? He did. He told me from his word. This became one of the most meaningful experiences in my entire life. I understand now sometimes when you don't hear God, he's teaching you a lesson. There's something he needs you to learn this. So what do you do during the times you don't hear him or feel him? You can't base your relationship with him off of a feeling, okay? What do you do? You stay there. You abide there. You continue to study his words. You continue to grow and know him. You continue to pray to him anyway. You be real with him from your heart. You keep on going. I didn't frantically search for an answer, but I continue my daily reading of God's word. I was convinced that as I regularly read the word, the spirit of God who knew the mind of God for me was in the process of helping me understand what God was doing in my life. Okay. God will let you know what he's doing in your life when and if you need to know. All right. One morning I was reading the account of the death of Lazarus. You can see it in John 11, 1 through 45. John reported that Jesus loved Lazarus, Mary and Martha. And although Jesus' word was that his good friend was sick and at the point of death, he delayed going until Lazarus died. 
In other words, Mary and Martha asked Jesus to come help their brother while he was sick and Jesus was silent. You getting it? All the way through Lazarus' final sickness and death, Jesus did not answer. Why? They received no response from the one who said uh, he loved Lazarus. Jesus even said he loved Mary and Martha, yet he did nothing. Well, what happened? Lazarus died and Mary and Martha went through the funeral process, preparing his body, put him in the grave and covering him with a stone. And still, God's silence continued. Finally, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go, let's go. When Jesus arrived there, Lazarus had been dead for four days, y'all. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. That's in verse 32. Then the spirit of God began to help me understand something. It seemed to me as if Jesus said to Mary and Martha, you are exactly right. If I had come when you asked, your brother would, would not have died. You know I could have healed him. Because you have seen me heal people many times before. If I had come when you asked me to, I would have healed him. But you would have never, ever known any more about me than you already do. I knew you were ready for a greater revelation of me. You were ready for a greater revelation, uh, revelation of me than you had known before. I want you to experience that I am the resurrection and the life. My refusal and my silence was not rejection. People, his, refu his, uh, his refusal and his silence towards you is not rejection. Understand that. They're he said they were opportunities. For me to disclose to you more of me than you have ever known. Do you understand? There are opportunities for you to disclose more about Jesus than you had ever, ever known. So you can experience it. When the truth dawned on me, I almost jumped off my, my bed. I said, that's what's happening in my life. That's what's happening. God's silence means he's, he's ready to bring into my life a greater revelation of himself than I'd ever known. I immediately changed my whole attitude towards God, y'all. With great anticipation, I began to watch for what God was, was going to teach me about himself. Then some things, you know, happened that I might never have responded to without that readiness and that anticipation. So there's always a time when you may not feel him there, y'all. You may not feel the fuzzies and the warmth going through your body and the electricity and all that stuff. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. That doesn't mean he's not there. And the circumstances going on around you may still stink. Now, when I pray and God is silent, I still pray through my, through my sin checklist, you know. I tell you, write everything down. Sometimes God's silences are caused by our sin in our life. Sometimes, yes. If unconfessed sin is in my life, I confess it and make it right, right away. If God's still silent after that, then I get ready for a brand new experience with him that I never previously ever experienced. I know something's coming big. Because I know my God, all right? Sometimes God is silent, y'all. As he prepares to bring you into a deeper understanding of himself, y'all got to stop getting angry at God every time you don't feel um, his presence or hear him. He's getting you ready. As long as you're doing everything he told you to do, he said, just stay there because he's about to take you up a step higher. Sometimes his silence is designed to bring us into a state of absolute dependence on and trusting him, trusting in him. Whenever God's silent, y'all, continue doing the last thing that God told you to do. Watch and wait for a fresh encounter with him, okay? You can respond to God's silence in two ways. You can become frustrated and feel guilty or impatient or be impatient. Or you can expect that God is about to bring you into a deeper knowledge of himself. And these responses, y'all, are as different as night and day. 
Do you know what has set me free? Y'all, the truth. The truth. Truth is a person who is actively involved in my life. The moment I understood what God might be doing, I adjusted my life to him. I put away my discouragement and my guilt. I quit feeling, you know, that maybe I was of no use to God and he wasn't listening to me, right? I made the major adjustment in my life to my attitude of expression, faith, and trust to my God. The moment I did, y'all, God began to show me how I could respond to him in such a way that I would know him on such a deeper level. Okay, we're going to let it go right there. We got Google Meets coming up any 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 moment now. The code against R-A-O-U-B-O-F-M-V-I, movie night. Mary Kay Baxter, who spent some time in heaven. Uh, we did we're her visit to hell last week and tonight's uh, her heaven testimony. So you guys come. This isn't a Kim ministry. This is Jesus's ministry. We are Jesus doers belongs to Jesus. It's ran and controlled uh, by Jesus himself, by the Holy Spirit. So you guys come. And I want to thank those of you who appreciate what all we're doing here for you. And you're helping us back. Thank you for honoring and obeying God's word in that area. Okay. Anything you need to know is in the description or on the website, jesusdoers.com. All right, God bless you all. Thank you. See you at Google Meets in a few minutes. Don't forget we have it also on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Same code. And then the evening classes is uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, we'll see you all there. God bless.